I always say like, I'd love to be a professional surfer, but I'm not good enough. So art's kind of the next best thing, but it's, you know, I've loved drawing since I was a kid, you know, and I think yeah, everyone loves to draw when they're a kid, but at a certain point, some people kind of stop or find other interests, whereas for me, it always continued this interest in drawing. So I think I always had in the back of my head, it's what I wanted to do. And then there was kind of a, maybe 10 or so years where I was working in the surfboard industry, where I was making surfboards and also doing artwork on the surfboard. So I was kind of still continuing that a little bit. I think after a certain period of doing that, I, I kind of reminded myself, oh, actually no, I really want to make my own kind of work. Go back to that, you know, when you're young and you just kind of make whatever you want and refocusing on that in, in later life was made me realise actually I do want to kind of try and make a career out of this. The kind of whole point of this, I, I never actually started drawing this way, but the point of this is it teaches you to see light, you know, and to really focus on light. It's really great when I see students who kind of are working very tightly and, and kind of, you know, nervously to kind of really just let loose and kind of attack the drawing and, and make discoveries and, and take risks. It's like attack mode, you just kind of attack it and see what happens, all right? So, you know, I just think back to when I was at high school and there was kind of a very narrow way of looking at art and so I'm trying to, you know, from my own experience of when you're actually out and you have your own practice, that's not the way the kind of world works and that's, and you know, it's not so constricted so I'm trying to kind of get students thinking about that already. I wouldn't add any more red, but you sit in the centre, there's no, there's just the one little red on the tongue, so like... I'd so we're making a big collaborative drawing, um, and for me the reason I wanted to do this, do it in this kind of format rather than a big mural on a wall is that I think the process is, is almost more important than the outcome, you know, so that they're really learning something. It's not just about having a pretty picture at the end. We're very like, we like to cling on to what we have. So he's been trying to like loosen us up, make us feel less precious about what we've done so that we can, you know, if something's not working, we can get rid of it without trying to make it better, make it better, make it better, make it better, which it just isn't going to happen. The whole idea is that we're meant to learn from the actual process of making this more so than actually, you know, the final product of it. I kind of feel like a lot of the time with wall murals, it's like, you know, the artist or facilitator will come in and they'll kind of outline everything and then it's basically the kids are just colouring it in, like, a, you know, paint by numbers or colouring in book and there's not really, not really a whole lot of learning that goes on um, in, in that kind of process because it's all, you know, about it's not really going to be any mistakes or, you know, happy accidents or, you know, for me I think it's really important that art and, and drawing is like a process of discovery. So working this way is really good because we're kind of building layers and layers on the drawing. We didn't, we didn't have a plan, we had a theme which is hope and then it's like just, let's just attack it and, and s s kind of work through it. I think this piece of displays like everyone has different passions and different ideas of hope and it still works in harmony and that's something we've got to like work into society I guess. It's, it's a real collaboration you know it's not just collaboration in terms of we're all doing a little bit of the work but it's a collaboration in that the students have to discuss with each other kind of democratically all right is this part working you know how can we make this work. See, and even that works because now you've got this like smudgy bit of black that's different to this black that's different to the grey. It's really good being able to collaborate with everyone else and getting Andy's tips on how to, um, you know, get everyone to the blend and work together in one uniform idea and yeah, it's good. Do we like it? Yeah. I think um, something that is always great to see, you know, and, and that, you know, I've noticed today is you'll have a student who's, who's working, you know, really tightly or, you know, is kind of almost kind of stressing about it and then to see them loosen up and just kind of really attack the drawing and you know have that release of you know because drawing can be very therapeutic it shouldn't just be about you know worrying about the end result but also the journey to get there and that again that idea of it being a process of discovery so it's really great to see kids kind of really just attack the drawing just have a good time with it. You kind of like make the most out of your mistakes in a way like you create you make that as the artwork as in so you don't have to erase anything and you add on from that and grow from that. I guess I've learnt that you can turn any mistake into something like really creative and I can have a different way of drawing like I never have before I really enjoy this like Normally I would just do like some plain sketch, but this has taught me to be exposed to something different. Just taking a looser, more in, intuitive approach to, to drawing and, and making work um, 
you know, and not, not put pressure on themselves to achieve a, you know, a perfect outcome, because perfect's kind of boring, I think, you know, I think perfect is kind of the worst thing to aim for when you're making work with them blended, because then you'll lose that kind of real sense of structure. Well, I really like how he's shown me that with a mistake, you can actually make it look better, and you don't have to be 100% perfect, you can make it look weird and it will still come out all right. I get, like, like, look at those little bleedy kind of marks in there, right? If I was doing it all We're really lucky to have this experience. From what I've learned now, that it doesn't matter if you mess up, like, you can just change it around and just, it'll just work. It's like, maybe I can't be bothered with the back of the head here, and I like the idea of it being these weird shapes. I find I get really good responses, particularly from kids, because a lot of my work is. You know, I kind of talk about this idea of happy accidents, of having discoveries in art, that you know, if something drips, often that's the most exciting part of the work, you know, to kind of, so to not put this kind of pressure on themselves to achieve a certain result, but, you know, just kind of engage in the process of making work and, and see what comes out at the end, you know, like as a process of there you discovery. Go. You see that? Because it does, now it's kind of, it's doing something, isn't it? Now it's kind of working. Maybe I like the idea of it being like a... Well, one thing I'm really interested in is, is finding new materials to work with and, and new ways of working, particularly, you know, because there's kind of traditions of painting and, and drawing and accepted ways of doing things, and trying to find new ways of making marks, new ways of seeing, and so a lot of that's about finding tools that aren't art making tools and, and trying to make work with those, so the sander polisher or you know, using a motorbike, motorbike burnouts as a form of drawing effectively. But so just map it out, keep it loose, keep it light. You know, if that, if I see the jawline goes down there, well, you know, why not let it continue? So it's not, everything doesn't have to be in here, like foreground and background. Doing it more freely and, and sort of working with mistakes that you've made. Instead of looking at all the horrible bad parts of the work, trying to fix them and move around obstacles that I come across. I like his style, it's all very expressive and just kind of does what he wants and if it makes a mistake it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be perfect and I think at the end of the day that's what art's about, you just kind of do what you want, not focusing on all the little mistakes, just enjoying the experience. I can't bother colouring it all in so maybe I'll just do it like that. And I think it's great, it's something I really get from teaching is like I'll, I'll kind of be saying to students, you know, loosen up, do this, do that. And then I'll get back in my studio and I'll suddenly I've tightened up and I'll be, rem it's like a reminder, oh hang on a minute, yeah this is what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, like, you know, does anyone, has anyone had a puppy before? Yeah, so you know when they're really little and if you let them off the lead and you let them go wild, they go, they go here, then they go here, then they go over there, then they go here, it's chaos, isn't it? So our drawings are going to be a little bit chaotic, so look like little wild humans, we want it to be a little bit wild, alright, a little bit crazy. We're going to make a drawing listening to music and we're going to try and draw what we hear. Now that sounds really confusing, but I'll show you how we're going to do it. So I'm going to dance, but I'm going to draw at the same time. Go! Two hands. Just think your pencil's dancing on the page. So you just go right. If your shoulder moves, move your hand. You got the moves. You should be good at this. Very cool. Be working with some of the parents, doing a uh, drawing workshop with them as well, which will be really kind of exciting. That's the first time I've done that at school. We've worked with the kids and the parents, which I think is a great kind of initiative to so that when the kids bring home their drawings, that some of them might be kind of chaotic or might not seem abstract or not make sense to the parents, that they can come and engage with that process as well and kind of have an understanding of, you know, that there is kind of method to the to the madness. I'm, I'm really excited about doing this. I've never been to a school where like I do workshops with the kids and then they get parents to come in, which I think is really good because everything that I kind of teach is, it's really about the process. It's not, it's not just about having a pretty image at the end. It's really about, I'm more interested in people actually learning something and, and some of these drawings that they might make, which might make look a little strange or abstract to the parents are gonna make a lot more sense once they have context to this is the process we're doing and this is why we're doing it and this is what we're learning from it. It's teaching us to loosen up to, you know, because our brain's going to toss, don't, don't go through it, you know, but so I want you at some point to force yourself to go from the top all the way down to there, to go from there to there, all right? And that's going to be for the perfectionists among you, it's going to be really difficult, but I want you to force yourself to break through that. So I'm going to time it, we're going to go a two minute continuous line drawing, wherever your eye goes, the pencil goes, 
pencil never comes off the page. Obviously, you can't cheat with this, right? It's really clear. Of you know, I think what Andy's done is just freed up everyone, that everyone can do this and enjoy it. And it doesn't mean making a pretty picture at the end of it. The art, when I was growing up, was very much about product driven and having to be right or wrong. And so I'd really wanted to be in a workshop where you can just come and feel free to be able to just explore your creativity. What Andy Cruelty teaches is that's what art's about. You know, it's about free thinking and self-expression and just letting go and to have the kids be released, I guess, and educated like that as opposed to this is how you draw a lake and there's a tree and this is, you know, it's just so good for them to be exposed to that. I teach uh, sport and English, but I can certainly see that having an artist on board uh, teaching these skills to the students would be really fantastic experience for the students. They're learning from someone within the industry, which is always a lot better than just learning from us teachers. And you're only allowed to look at the photo, you're not allowed to look at your drawing for a full minute. I think that's what's been really great about this whole residency is that it's it's about learning. It's not just about out, outcomes in terms of beautiful images or kids trying to show off. It's, it's about actually getting into the guts of learning and, and working things out and creatively problem solving and all, all that good stuff that making good art's about. I think Newman's done a great job in this space getting, you know, a resident and artist to come and, you know, encourages kids to kids to be free with, you know, the way they look at the world and the way they see their art and think it's a really good initiative that the school's done this year and I applaud them for it, it's been great.